Hey guys, so it is ridiculously windy here in Western Pennsylvania. It's not a prayer of recording anything down in the shop except the garage doors rattling. So we're upstairs in the office, gonna do some electronic workbench stuff, a uh, little bit different format, stream of conscious if you will. So uh, hopefully that is okay for those of you who are interested. I have here two of the latest generation devices from our friends over at particle.io. If you follow the channel at all, you know I'm a big fan of these particle devices. Uh, just they're a great combination of feature set that they come with, um, including some cloud services, which are very useful and very approachable, easy to set up, easy to get into the development environment, all of that fun stuff. Well, they have added a new capability that is particularly interesting. The two devices I have here, one is an Argon. This one is a, a Xenon. I actually have three of those. Probably only set up two of them today. And if you look over here on the Particle webpage, you'll see that these things include what they call mesh capability. All right, so what is a mesh and why do we care? In a nutshell, the mesh is a fast, local way for these devices to talk to each other, to be able to exchange messages between really any subset. It could be one to one, one to the whole group, bunches of them to other bunches, doesn't really matter. And they don't all have to be able to communicate directly with each other via radio frequency. Uh, if one node is out of range of another node, but they're trying to pass a message, somebody in the middle can act as a relay. And all of this routing, how the message is actually gonna get from A to B or, or A to Q or wherever it's going, is handled by the mesh software layer that's baked into the device OS. You don't have to think about it. Uh, you'll see when we get to the code, there's no source or destination information included in these messages. You just, from any one device say, I wanna send a message, and on any other device say, I wanna receive these kinds of messages, and the underlying software will make sure that it happens. So let's get them out of the box, see what the difference is between just ordering a chip and a dev kit, and then see what we got to do to make this all work. All right, we're going to start with the Argon kit, uh, because any mesh network you create with these devices has to have a, a gateway, something that connects your mesh ultimately to the internet and to the particle cloud. And the Argon is the Wi-Fi version of that. There's uh, another device called the Boron, which is the cellular version, but um, I don't really care about cellular at this point so all right what's in the box uh, tell us what you're building i haven't built anything yet here is the actual chippo okay well straight away one of the things that's different about the new mesh devices is the form factor uh, this is the same shape and largely pinout as if you go on the adafruit website and you see the feather form factor the line of dev boards they have uh, this is compatible with that. Keep digging. Okay, package number two is the Wi-Fi antenna. And that looks like this. Now, uh, this is another change from the Photon. Um, if I get the Photon out here, you see in this corner, it has the connector uh, for a Wi-Fi antenna. In fact, you could put this antenna on your Photon. Um, but by and large, you didn't, you didn't need it uh, unless you got really far from your Wi-Fi hotspot or whatever. Um, all the photons I have in service are running just as you see them. This thing, however, um, is pretty useless without the antenna on it. Uh, and in fact, the Argon has two antenna ports down here at the bottom. Uh, one of these is for the Wi-Fi and the other is for Bluetooth. Um, there are lots of applications for Bluetooth as well on these devices, and if you start making heavy use of Bluetooth, you're probably going to want another antenna for that as well. There we go. So that's what it looks like all attached, and now you have this dangly thing you get to deal with. All right, back to the box. We got one more bag in here. So this is what makes it a dev kit. It comes with a little USB cable, a little bit of breadboard, two LEDs and two current limiting resistors so you can make your outputs uh, light up, I guess. Let's just drop this thing on the breadboard so we can play with it. And already I can tell you there's something really annoying about this feather form factor. Uh, it's one breadboard hole wider than the old photon form factor. So whereas your, your photon used to sit on the breadboard and give you access to two breadboard holes for either pin, 
Uh, this thing you're going to have to pick and choose. You're going to get access to two holes on one side, but only one hole on the other. I guess someday we're going to have to start making breadboards wider. So a whole lot's changed from the Photon, but a couple of things are still the same. You still set up and claim a new particle device with an app on your phone. Let's see how that works. The new setup process is based on QR codes. So you hit the plus button to tell it what kind of device you want to add, and then you'll be prompted to enable the camera on your phone so that you can scan the code that's on the device itself. There's a friendly reminder here to make sure that you've attached the antenna and powered up the Argon before you try to do the pairing. Particle's still actively working on the OS for these devices, so yours is almost assuredly going to need an update when you get it out of the box. Uh, don't let the speed that the videos go in here fool you. This is going to take about 10 minutes to get the whole thing done. And in fact, I had to restart the app after the device OS was done. Once you're up to date and paired, you'll be asked whether you want to use this Argon in a mesh or not. You only get 10 of these networks for free as a hobbyist, so there may be occasions where you want to set one up and just use it like you would have a Photon, but the whole point of this exercise is to play with mesh, so we'll say yes. We gotta get on the Wi-Fi network, so the Argon's gonna scan, find my home network, and prompt me for the credentials before it goes and sets itself up, registering with the Particle Cloud as one of my claimed devices. New devices start out with a default name, and I kind of liked Pizza Lawyer, but uh, we're going to use this as a demo gateway, so that's what I'll name it. And then the Mesh Network itself needs a name too, so I will creatively call it Demo Mesh. Then finally, the Mesh Network needs a password to make sure only authorized devices can join it. Okay, with the device set up online and claimed as your own, you can get into the build environment and start writing some code for it. And here's where the Mesh stuff becomes beautiful. This code couldn't be any more simple. So anyway, let's go into the build environment, tell it we want to target our demo gateway, and come down to the code, and let's write a new app for the gateway, which we'll call the gateway app. Okay, so ultimately we gotta uh, make this do something to demonstrate that our mesh is working. I got a couple of stepper motors over on the other table hooked up to my bench power supply. And what we'll do is we will set up the gateway to send some motor commands out, and then we'll set up the uh, xenons, which are the mesh sort of endpoints, if you will, to receive those commands and actually control the motor. So here's the beauty of this. In order to send a message out to the mesh, all I have to do is execute one command, mesh.publish. It takes two arguments. Uh, one is the name of the message that you're putting out there. So I'm going to call this message motor1. And by the way, these are, they're just text. You make them up. There's not some documented weird protocol that you have to file. You can uh, call your messages, whatever you want. And as long as you can figure out how to shove it into a string of characters, you can make the payload whatever you want. So um, in my case, I'm going to have which motor do I want to command and do I want it to go clockwise or counterclockwise. And then I'm going to wait two seconds. And I'm going to copy and paste that command and I'm going to send it to motor two. Let me put some space in here to make this a little, a little cleaner. And then finally, I'm going to send a counterclockwise command just to motor. The way these things get parsed, it's, uh, it's like a filter from the start. So you'll see when we get to the client, but I'll be able to receive messages that start with motor, uh, and I will get the just motor command. I'll get motor one, I'll get motor two. I'll get all of that just by signing up for motor. Okay, so there's our three commands. Motor one clockwise wait two seconds, motor two clockwise, wait two seconds, both motors counterclockwise, wait two seconds, start it over. Let's go ahead and hit the flash button and send that application to our newly provisioned Argon. Not much to setting up a mesh device and having it broadcast some messages out to the device mesh. Of course, it's incredibly boring when your mesh only has one device on it. So uh, let's take two of the xenons, Go through the setup process for them. Now, obviously, we're not going to create a new mesh. They're going to join the existing one. And that process is a, a little bit different. But rather than running you through the whole thing, I'm just going to link to the video from the particle folks that shows you how to do that. It's one or two different steps from setting up the Argon, but nothing you can't handle. Okay, at the risk of throwing too many new things at you in one video, I've switched dev tools to write the code for the Xenon. What you're looking at here is a program from Microsoft called Visual Studio Code. It's a freebie, you can go download it. 
And Particle has implemented all the stuff you need to do development for their platform as an extension to this tool. So if you come up here into the old view menu and you come down to extensions, you see over here in the left, I've got a bunch of Particle stuff in here. Realistically, the one called Workbench is the only one you need to go search for and install. Uh, it'll take care of installing all the rest of it. And uh, once you have this, you can do a couple of pretty sweet things. Um, you get code complete, de you know, local debugging. Uh, you get the ability to compile and flash your devices locally. Um, it manages the installation of all of the open source tool chain stuff you need. It, it does a whole lot of work uh, for you, which their old local tools did most of that stuff, but it wasn't nearly as uh, as sweet as this. So. If you're a complete and total newbie, I still recommend that you use the web-based editor for code and just don't worry about installing anything. Uh, but you will pretty quickly decide that there are some limitations <laughs> to the web-based IDE. And uh, when you come to that point, go and, and check out Particle Workbench. In the interest of time, I went ahead and put the code in here. I really don't want you to get distracted by the code necessary to run the stepper motors. Um, if you're interested in how that works, drop me a comment. We can go through it sometime. What I really wanted to show you here was the, the mesh stuff. So all these initial defines and variables and things all have to do with controlling the actual stepper motor that's hooked up to the Xenon. Uh, likewise, here in the setup routine, these two pins, the direction pin and the move a step pin have to be defined as outputs. Down here in line 20 is where we do the first thing related to mesh. Unlike when you put messages out onto the mesh with the publish command, which you can just do anytime you feel like it, to receive messages, you have to subscribe to some sort of a topic on the mesh. Uh, you'll recall on my Argon, I sent out messages that had an event type of either just motor or motor one or motor two, depending on a, what I wanted to address. In the subscribe, you don't have to list all those things separately. Uh, it's a filter by character and it's a start with kind of criteria. So by subscribing to the word motor, I will get motor, motor one, motor two. I'll get anything that starts with the word motor. What happens when I get one of those motor messages? Well, I'm gonna call this motor handler. They call them event handlers, which is why I named it motor handler, but it's really just a function that is gonna get called automatically whenever a mesh message comes in that starts with motor in the event category. Now my motor handler routine is down here on line 28. When the device operating system calls it, it passes it two strings of characters. Uh, the first is the exact name of the event that was published on the mesh. And the second is the string of whatever data packet that got published with that particular message. So let me move this up and expand it a little bit to see what's in here. There's not really that much. Uh, we're in C and working with strings in C is frankly kind of a pain. Um, but this first if statement does nothing but execute the string compare function. It's looking at the event variable that was passed to us by the operating system. And this string compare returns a zero if you get an exact match. So this line says if compare the string in the event variable with the fixed string, the word motor, um, if you get an exact match, or that's what these two pipes are, compare that event variable with the word motor one. So I will drop down into this if statement if the event name was either motor or motor one. Now this is where you do the filtering. Uh, if I get an event motor two, my motor handler function will get called because I subscribe to anything that started with motor. But here in this if statement, I'll filter that out. Motor two won't be a match here and we'll just drop out and nothing will happen. But for now, let's assume that we got a command that's relevant to us. So now we have to go look at the data that came with that event. That's the other variable that's passed to us. In this case, it's another simple if statement. Compare what's in that data packet with the phrase CW for clockwise. Um, if you got a clockwise, then set the motor direction used elsewhere, don't worry about it, um, two clockwise. And we're making an assumption here, which isn't necessarily good practice, but it keeps things easy. Uh, I'm just gonna assume if I got a motor message and it wasn't clockwise, that it's counterclockwise. 
good practice would be to explicitly check everything and, and not use the defaults, but um, what are you going to do? So that's it in a nutshell. The mesh is how I'm getting which direction I want which motor to run sent from the gateway out to the end nodes. And then just for completeness, I'll show you this run motor function um, sends a bunch of pulses out to the stepper motor to actually make it go around. Uh, but right here is where the motor direction is used. The first thing the run function does is output whether it's supposed to be going counterclockwise or clockwise when the, uh, when the pulses hit. Okay, cheated a little bit. I moved my argon code over here to part of workbench so I could add some serial prints in there so that we could see when it's publishing a mesh command. So I'm going to get go ahead and launch the serial monitor, uh, which will connect the argon. And then when it sends a command over the mesh, we'll be able to see it print out here what command it sent. And we'll be able to watch and see if the motors do what they're supposed to do. And here you can see that as the argon is putting commands onto the mesh, the stepper motors react nearly instantaneously. In fact, the bulk of the lag between a command going on the mesh and the motor changing direction is actually on the xenon side of things because the motor completes whatever rotation it's on before it rechecks the direction. The mesh is really fast and could sustain a rather high message rate even if there were a lot of devices. All right, obviously I skimmed over a lot of stuff and we still only scratched the surface of what's possible with microcontrollers, mesh networking technology, and we didn't get into how it actually works at all. Uh, but this video is already too long and uh, I want you guys to let me know what, if any of this is, uh, is of interest to you. I know this is a little off the beaten path for the stuff I usually do, but you can't control the weather and uh, it's better than doing nothing. Drop me a note down below. I'm dying to know what you would do if you were the uh, master of such technology. I don't know if it's ever going to get warm here again in Western PA, so I may need some more indoor projects to work on. Till then, you guys hang tight, YouTube, and uh, hopefully you'll see you in the shop next time.